Hello and welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapers TV show and podcast. I'm your host, Christine Innes, and I am delighted to have the very talented Daniel Tolson joining me today. Welcome and thank you so much. My pleasure and it's nice to be able to do it uh, virtually because I'm here in Taiwan today. Yes, definitely. And our roles are reversed because I was on your show last week. So it's nice to have you in the hot seat, actually. <laughs> so. Well, it is a bit hot under the collar. It's winter time in here and I put on the ACs because I know you're going to ask some tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> I will try now, definitely. <laughs> so, but we, we've obviously chatted um, a little bit and, you know, I've really sort of dived into, you know, what you do. And I think it's really incredible. And, um, you know, so many people obviously starting a business, you know, need someone to help and support them and direct them. So do you want to just share a little bit about what you do with our audience? And then we can dive into those tough questions. Mm. Well, you know, that feeling you get, when you don't know where your next customer is coming from and you wonder if you're going to make enough money to survive. That's the problem that I solve for my clients and they start their businesses and they're great at what they do. And the reason why I started my coaching business is because I'm a great coach. But once I started the business of coaching, it was a whole new world and I had all of this skill and I had all this potential, but there was two things I couldn't do. And the first one was I couldn't speak about what I did. I couldn't explain it to people. So people would say, I hear Daniel doing his thing, but I just don't get it because a coach solves problems. They're not a marketer. So I had to learn how to speak. The second thing I had to do is I had to learn how to sell. Now I had grown up in a porn broking business and it was very easy to sell secondhand goods. Here's a bottle. <laughs> this is what it does. These are the features. These are the benefits and it's physical. But when you start to sell coaching, you're selling an invisible. So the question was, how do I make the invisible visible? And it took me years to figure it out. I was lucky I had time and resources, but most businesses don't. And so they fail in the first two years. They lose all of their money. They lose all of their time and they start to doubt themselves and they avoid any future business ventures. Mm -hmm. So I come in and I help them solve that problem of where's my next customer coming from? And I make sure they make enough money, not just to survive, but to be able to become, do and have everything they want. Love it. I love it. And it's so needed because I think, you know, from people that I talk to, they're, you know, a couple of years into their business and they've all struggled with that. And it sort of is, you know, we have something that we want to deliver, but like you said, we just don't know how to actually put it into the right words. And, you know, sometimes like, my family don't even really understand. And, you know, like sometimes I get caught up going, am I actually communicating, you know, <laughs> what I'm doing with them or, is it, you know, um, you know, maybe they're just not the right audience either as well. That's the other part to it. But um, I think it, it's definitely really something that we need to really hone into is the communication side, but also sales because without the sales, we don't have a business. Without sales, business fails. And it's interesting what you said here. How do I explain it to my family? Now, what I've learned over the years is you've got these resources and they're called family members, but they're also your extended sales team. And if they don't know what you do, if they don't know the benefits and the results that you provide for your clients, they can't sell on your behalf. So you've got this redundant workforce sitting there willing to work, but they don't know what to say. And it comes back to that first thing. If you don't know how to speak about what you do, how can you have your friends and family and even your customers out there selling on your behalf? And, and let's face it, 97% uh, of Australian businesses need a referral plan in place just to survive, but only 3% actually have it. And your referral plan are your family, your friends, and your happy customers. So you've got to teach them how to sell and how to speak about what you do. Mm. And it's really important because what I've learned is you know, sometimes it's really easy to actually sell somebody else's product mm. or service and to really, you know, I guess have that more trust and faith within yourself to be able to really instill that sort of belief with other people going, hey, this is what I'm doing and take their ownership and really own it what you're doing. Um, I, I struggled at the, I will, you know, be perfectly honest, I struggled at the start of my business to really own it and just to go, this is what I'm doing. 
But the more that I sort of sink into it, you sort of go, okay, this is what I've done. This is what I've created. And, you know, I'm very happy now just to sort of spew, you know, to tell everybody what I'm doing. But a lot of businesses have that sort of, you know, self-doubt and within themselves to be able to step themselves into the, the limelight. Mm. One of the things I learned with selling the invisible, it's like going to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, the doctor asks, where does it hurt? The doctor's not shy about asking you, what's the pain? What's the problem? And then what he helps you do or she helps you do is be, to become pain-free. But see, when we're selling the invisible, we're trying to sell our tools. And you never go to a doctor and the doctor says, see this syringe here? It's a 3.5 millimetres, two gauge stainless steel made in China. Nobody cares about that. All we care about is what does it do? And so we have to get clear on what does our product do? And people only care about four things. What does it do for me? What's the benefit? What's the result? What's the improvement? What's the transformation? And that's all we need to know to be able to sell. Because when you're selling the invisible, that makes it visible. Visible. Oh, you're going to help me increase my income. Beautiful. You're going to help me decrease my expenses. Beautiful. You're going to get customers walking into my door asking for me instead of me going out and knocking on the door myself. I would love that. That's the benefit, the result, the improvement and the transformation that I'm looking for. Yeah. And I think the, the more as, you know, we're starting to step into this online world and I think, you know, 2020 has made so many businesses having to take that leap probably earlier than what they've expected, mm -hmm. that they're now having to learn how to communicate that in a different way as well to potential audiences out there. One of the biggest things that I see, Christine, is moving on to the digital world is people are afraid of it and they fear what they don't know. And they think, well, I'm going to go online and people are going to reject me. People are going to criticize me. You've got to think about it. It's just a shop front. We were in pawnbroking for 17 years and into the business, about 12 years into the business, people would walk into the shop and say, I didn't even know you were here. And I said, well, how long have you been walking down the street for? They said 12 years. And I said, you haven't even seen us. And they said, no. Now, we didn't understand window displays at that stage. We're a pawnbroker. We didn't understand it. But we'd been in retail. We'd had fashion stores. So I said to my mum, bugger this. And I went and got these two giant tins of paint. One was a fluorescent orange paint and the other one was a fluorescent yellow. And I painted the windows and I put two big signs on. Ca instant cash loans and an arrow pointing in the door and sell your goods for cash with an arrow in. And people went, oh, that's what you do. And so I just had to bring the awareness with telling them what we did. And then it started to funnel people into the front of the business. Now, you might not have a shop front anymore, but your digital front is social media. But there's a slight difference here, Christine, is people aren't looking for the sign that says instant cash loans. They're looking for, is it working for you? And so what you've got to do on social media now is you've got to demonstrate the benefits, the results, improvements and transformations in your life. And see, I call this the when Harry met Sally model of lead generation. People look at you and go, wow, I want what you're having. And then they enter into your store and then they follow you. And this is a relationship sale now. You build the relationship socially and that's how we do it. But we've got to overcome those fears of rejection and criticism. By the way, people don't care what you look like. The interesting thing I learned many years ago was I was doing a survey and better looking people women who look like models, men who look like models, it's actually harder for them to succeed because people go, oh, they're too good looking. I don't want to go over there. You're better off not to look like that. You're better off to look like the plain Jane because you're no threat. And I, and I know a client in Sydney like that. He is no threat. He's just the guy next door. Uh, my next door neighbor is not like this, but he doesn't cut his, he cuts his hair himself. He doesn't know how to shave properly. He doesn't brush his teeth. He doesn't wear deodorant. He's never walk alone but he made about $4 million in the first three years of his business because he was non-threat. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are starting to, I guess, start to see through the BS, if I just call it that, because mm. people understand now a little bit more about selling, but they want people to be authentic. They really want them to show up as yourselves. And if you can practice what you preach and, you know, like you said, you know, show people how you've transformed by your own methods or, and you're practicing it every day. That is what's going to attract so mm. many more people um, and follow you as well. Mm. 
there's three things that we have to do moving forward into the into the new world is we have to start by doing a relationship sale. And what happens is the relationship is so much more important than the purchase. People want to know that, are you going to be there for me? Are you going to take care of me? When I've got a question, can you help me out? This is more important than price. I would rather spend a couple of hundred dollars extra on a purchase just for the peace of mind of knowing somebody's there to support me when shit does hit the fan. And so we're going to start with a relationship sale and relationships take time. And at the start, it's like dating. Uh, when I met my wife, wife, I saw her on the bus on the way to work and I went, wow, look at that. <laughs> but what happens is you got to think, what's my angle of approach? How am I going to start the conversation? It ended up being that we're on the same flight and I went into the room and I went, wow, that's that thing that I like. What do I do now? And then we got on the aircraft and my first attempt to talk to her, she said no. Now, what happens is I'm just building up this relationship. I want to start the relationship. And so we're going to be prepared to have these relationships. And how do you do that? Relationships take time. And what will happen is people will ghost you. What ghosting is, is they'll come to your Facebook page. They'll look at all your photos. They'll join your lives. And then when they're ready to take the first step, they'll become a first time liker and they'll press the like button. And after that, they'll become a first time commenter. And after that, it'll be the first time conversation. So it's like a date. You, If you went up to any man and you got down on your knee and you proposed to him the moment that you saw him, he'd say, you're a bloody psychopath. <laughs> and this is what salespeople do. Do you want to buy it? Yeah. No, I don't want to buy it. I'd like you to help me solve my problems, but let's mm. buy, begin by having a relationship. Are you trustworthy? Mm. And so we're going to start by building a relationship. After we build a relationship, what we have to do today is we have to educate our clients on their problem. See, people don't wake up in the morning and say, I need a business coach. They wake up in the morning and goes, oh, it hurts. What hurts? I keep making hiring mistakes. Yeah. Ah, let's talk about that. And you educate them on the problem. You say, well, the average hiring mistakes cost you five to seven times the annual salary. So if you're paying $100,000 in wages and you hire the wrong person, that's going to have an impact of $500,000 on your business. Ah, oh, it hurts. Take it out. Yeah. And then what you do, you don't try to sell. What you do after that is you have to take a consultative approach. And when you go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't try to sell you on the medicine. They don't try to sell you on an operation. They say, let's do an examination. Let me ask some questions. By the sounds of it, it sounds like you've got an appendix. Now, if the doctor said straight away, let's pull the appendix out, you'd say, wouldn't you want to do an x-ray or a blood test? And so what the doctor does, and he knows, he says, well, let's do a diagnostic. Let me send you to pathology. And then once the results come back, the doctor says, let's sit down and discuss the results. And you sit down and the doctor says, well, you've got an appendicitis. Here's what you can do about it. The first thing is you can do nothing about it. And you can just let nature take its course. But here's the problem with that. If it explodes at night, if it starts to leak, and you can't get to hospital in the next 60 minutes, you're going to be dead. So that's the first option. The second option is you can take some medication. The medication will take about three to four days to kick in and we will discover in two weeks from now if it works or not. You'll probably have level pain, 80 to 90% levels of pain. That's the second option. So you could take that if you're prepared to take the risk. And then the doctor says, well, here's the third option. What we could do is I've got an opening today and we can rush you in for an emergency removal of the appendix. It'll take about an hour and you'll walk out of hospital. Tomorrow you'll be eating bacon and eggs, drinking coffee with your family, and you can surf by Wednesday. Now, you're an intelligent person. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. You go, well, the first option, I don't want that because that's too high a risk. The second option, gee, do I have to wait two weeks to find out and I'll probably have to come back? That's a lot of risk and a waste of time. Doc, schedule me in straight away for the operation because I want to eat bacon and eggs with the family and I want to be surfing on Wednesday. And see, as a consultant, what you do is you ask great questions and you show them the benefits of taking actions and the risks of not taking action and you give them the option. And if you do that, you can only win. You'll never lose. If the customer says, those options don't suit me, they'll say, thank you so much for, my, for, you, for your advice and you'll leave with a referral partner. You'll always win. If they say that's what I want, either option one, two or three, you've won and you've got a customer for life. Yeah. And I think it's really important that, you know, 
as we you know become more connected with people around the world it is like you said those building those relationships and they do take time you have to really nourish them and I always say to people that, you know, you have to get to know your clients like they're your best friend, you know, mm. like find everything out as, as much as you possibly can, because what they might be saying is the issue or the problem may not necessarily be what is needed right now. Um, you know, so it, it is asking those questions. It's really, you know, diving deep into it um, mm. because it could be multiple different things going on right now. And it may not be a business thing. It could be a personal thing that's happening. That's a trait that is stopping them from, you know, achieving their goals as such. So mm. I think, yeah, definitely asking great questions. Um, I saw a post today um, and I, I can't remember who said it. It was all that, you know, great leaders ask great questions. And that is why that they're more successful because it's not just, you know, a yes or no. It's about, hey, give me more answers, you know, tell me more about it um, to keep the conversation flowing with them as well. In medicine, we have what's called referred pain. And so we can focus on the symptomology or we can just get rid of the root cause. And I remember a couple of years ago, my dad said, I've got a sore ankle. And so he went to the doctor a couple of weeks later, he has a back operation. <laughs> and we said, dad, you went in for a sore ankle. And now you got a back operation. He goes, yeah, I know. How crazy is that? And he said, now that the back's fixed, the ankle pain's gone away. Mm. And so what happens is we come in with, with one problem and a customer will come in to me and they'll say, Daniel, I can't make enough sales to survive. Now they think it's a sales problem. I have a look at the team and I go, it's a hiring problem. You got the wrong people on the bus and the ones that should be on the bus, they're in the wrong seats. And all of a sudden you put them in a different seat, you give them a different role, a different set of responsibilities and sales goes up and you haven't even touched the sales process. Mm. And so what you think might be the problem could not be the problem. And this is why you go to the doctor. See, there's so many people around the world. Um, it was a couple of years ago. I had a, I had a headache, headache and I thought I can't get rid of this headache. So I went on to Google and I diagnosed the signs and symptoms. Well, after I looked at the signs and symptoms, I must've had gonorrhea, STD, <laughs> AIDS, HIV, and now I've got all these diseases. And I thought, Oh gee, I just had a headache. <laughs> and so people self diagnose, yeah. but the problem with self diagnosis, Christine, is that I studied um, people going to university and studying medicine. And what happens is when you study the disease and when you get right down into the details of the symptomology, your brain can create psychosomatic illnesses and medical students end up showing the signs and the symptoms of the disease that they're studying. Mm. And so if you're focusing on the wrong problem, you'll end up creating that problem, but you'll put all of your time, energy and effort into solving that and you'll still have the problem over there. Okay. but you'll be convinced it's over here. And we call this object fixation. And this happens to skydivers. What happens is they jump out of the back of the aircraft. They got the parachute on the back. They're ready to go. But what happens is they're too busy focused on where they want to land. And eventually they just plummet from uh, 15,000 feet and hit the ground and kill themselves because they forget to pull the parachute. Yeah. And so you've got to be focusing on the right things in business. And I say in business, and my, your, your business mindset has to be like a parachute. It only works when it's open. Mm, yeah, I, I so agree with it. One of the things that I'm learning right now is to be more present in the moment. So instead of thinking about all the extra things, and I mean, I always set goals of what it is, but when I come back to the present moment and actually think about what is critical right now for me to do, and a lot of the time is, you know, those other things that I'm, you know, thinking about, they're not critical to the business. It's, you know, making sure I've got those relationships. It's making sure that, you know, I'm spreading the message of what needs to be done and really supporting my current clients as well. That's critical. The, you know, making sure the right font and everything's in alignment, that is not critical because, you know, they're the nice to haves. Um, but it no is. No customer ever said, <laughs> I want to buy your product because of your font size. Exactly. <laughs> and your spacing. Exactly. But, you know, we do get so fixated on, you know, all the other things because sometimes we just don't want to deal with 
you know, what is really critical right now and what is in the present moment that we need to deal with. And I think a lot of times that we procrastinate so much on it because, you know, it's the stuff we may not want to do. And if you're not a salesperson and, you know, for me, it's numbers, I will procrastinate every time that I have to go and do my numbers and my accountant goes, Christine, we have to meet up. I'm like, going, okay, all right, no worries. But, you know, they're the tasks that I just don't want to do. But, you know, it's now getting back to that present moment. What is critical right now for the business that I need to focus on? There's a, there's a rule of three in business. And it says that there's only three things that are important. And you've got to figure out what is the single most important thing for you in your business. And you've got to focus on that 80% of the time. Everything else is peripheral to that. And so this rule of three, I figured this out in my business years ago, and I had to do three things and only three things. And once I figured out these three things, my business just took off and I acquired 500 new clients in a year. And I went in to be recognized the, uh, as the rookie business coach of the year because I had so much business growth, it just exploded. And so I looked at my business and I said, what is the single most important thing that I need to do with 80% of my time? And that was marketing. Yeah. And for me, my marketing is my speaking. I've got to speak about what I do. So I said to myself, I've got to speak about what I do 80% of the time. And so I went out there and I hopped onto live streams. I hopped onto podcasts. I got onto national television. I went on the radio and I just talked about what I did. I talked about the benefits, the results and the improvements, the transformations. And all of a sudden I got eyeballs. I got eyeballs on me and not everybody's going to buy. You know, I said to one of my clients, he said, oh, Daniel, nobody comes into my shop. And we're walking down the street. And I said, have you noticed that we're walking past all of these shops and you haven't gone in? Do you notice they're not closing their doors or telling you to f somewhere off because you didn't come in? He said, no, why would they do that? And I said, why would people come into your shop who don't want to buy? You've got to focus on the right people. You've got to get the right eyeballs on you. You've got to get a lot, but you only need a few. Yeah. So the first thing I had to do was learn how to speak about what I did. And so I started to talk about my business in a different way. The second thing I had to do really, really well was to sell. And that's a consultative method. That's building the relationship. Some people want to buy my product 10 years from now. I'm cool with that. My doors are going to be open. But most people, they think their doors are going to be closed. So they just want to push, 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 push. But this is a long game. And so you've got to learn how to sell. And then finally, what I had to do was I had to learn how to coach really well. Now, as I mentioned before, I was a great coach. That wasn't the problem. The problem was speaking and selling. And the same thing is going to be true for your business. If you spend 80% of your time face-to-face -face with customers, you are guaranteed success. See, there's a, there's a study that was done many, many years ago. And they said the average salesperson, which is the business owner, never mistake that you're not a salesperson. Everybody's in sales. You're selling an idea. You're selling a concept. You're selling a service. You're selling something. You might call it many different things, but let's be real. It comes down to sales and without sales, business fails. So what you've got to do is you've got to start to talk about what you do and then you've got to be able to sell it and then you've got to deliver on the promise. Now, this study that I'm mentioning here, since 1927, the average salesperson spends less than 90 minutes a day selling. Imagine that. They're there for eight hours and one and a half hours of the day, they're face-to-face -face selling. Imagine what would happen if you spent 80% of your time speaking to people, marketing, getting eyeballs on you. Your business will explode. And I've seen this. One of my clients, they came into one of my trainings with an idea. We put a strategic plan into place. They had no money. Four years later, the business has got $35 million worth of revenues. Their next target is to hit 100, which will happen next year. What did they do? They went out and spoke to all the customers. They didn't speak to each other. They went and spoke to the customer. Then they said, this is what we can do for you. This is how it's going to improve your situation. They got a sales appointment. They closed, not all the deals, but enough to get $35 million. And now what they do is they deliver. And everybody's going to do the same. Speak, sell, and deliver. Yeah. It's, it's just like for me, I, I've, everyone that I speak to, you know, we, I'm such a big believer that we've all got a story to tell and that story needs to be shared. And the more that we can start owning it, sharing it, 
that's going to, you know, create these beautiful conversations. Like you said, like it all is relationships and this is how it all starts. So for me, I think so many people overcomplicate it. They think that you've got to have all these sales funnels. You've got to have all this also, you know, stuff in there. But sometimes, like you just said, it is simply you getting out there and sharing your message. It's, you know, you don't need all the fancy stuff. Um, mm. You know, that comes with it all. And yeah, I, I definitely learnt the hard way. Um, when I first started out, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to have this, I've got to have that. And, you know, with it, but when it comes back down to the basics, I literally just needed to start sharing my story and to share what I'm doing and what I want to achieve and what I can actually give to people as well. And that is the, the beautiful client attraction that happens with it all. Let's break it down. There's psychological principles into play here, but we've got to be aware of them. First of all is the law of attraction. You're going to attract into your life people who have the same problem and goal as you. And if you've overcome that problem, the law of attraction will bring them to you. Because essentially you put out a little signal to the universe and say, hey, I've solved this problem. If you need some help, I'm here. And people gravitate towards you. This is why when we're in the pawnbroking business, we said, world, we can lend you money. Those people who are looking for money, it gets into their reticular activation system. They go, I'm looking for somebody who can lend me money. There's, oh, there's the Tolson family. Let's go to them. And so people come to you. The second thing is what's called a mirror neuron. And what's happening in your body, I'm feeling it in my body. And when you smile, I have to process it through all of my senses. So it's happening inside of my mind. So when we talk about the when Harry met Sally model of lead generation, when they see you succeeding or overcoming a goal, they go, wow, that feels great. I can feel their energy. I want to talk to that person. And see, so this is what happens is when you solve the problem and when you become a product of your product, you become the automatic authority. In my field, people can go to Tony Robbins. People can go to all the other top coaches in the world, but they don't want it from Tony. They want it from Daniel. They can go and stand in a room of 15,000 people and possibly, possibly, possibly get some eye contact, but they'll never get their question answered. But when they come and work with me, they can have me by themselves with no interruptions, no distractions. You don't have to jump up and down for, for three days, for 14 hours. You get Daniel to yourself and I can help you solve your problems. And see, I'm the authority in my field for this particular problem. And if they want something from Tony, they'll go to Tony. But most of the time they don't want to because I can help them solve it personally. So you've got the law of attraction. People will be attracted to you because you're a leader. But don't mistake what leadership is not. Leadership, you don't have to be the Tony Robbins. Like most people who are listening to this, they probably go, who the hell is Tony Robbins? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be the world's number one. All you have to be is within arm's reach. And if they can reach out and touch you physically or virtually, you're within arm's reach. And the true definition of leadership is just being one step ahead of everybody else. Because what happens, they go, hey, I remember Daniel. He was just there yesterday, but he's over there today. Maybe he can share the secret of success. And so never forget that. Leadership's just about being one step ahead within arm's reach. And when you master that, you'll master business. Oh, I love it so much. I've like literally, you know, got goosebumps and I'm like going, oh, I have to personally take note of that and write that down <laughs> at the end. So <laughs> to apply, it's, it's, it is great because like I, I, I feel that, you know, even when I was working in the corporate world, you know, there was all this training that you would go to when, you know, thinking that you're going to then become the best manager, the best leader and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of the times is that somebody is just looking for that next step, like where to go to, you know, how did you become a team leader? How did you become a manager? You know, that sort of progression so that they can learn from you and not overcomplicate the whole process as well. So instead of having 20 different steps, you can have, you know, two to three steps that they can mm. easily follow and implement. Because I think a lot of the times that, you know, we can get caught up and create multiple processes and multiple systems and that but it comes down to like you said those couple of basics and when you can nurture that and really perfect it then that really becomes I, I guess just a, a natural thing that you do um, mm. so it's no longer selling it, it's just 
it, it's just a natural um, area that you focus on in your business. In 2008, I took my first life coaching course. And at the start, people would say, what do you do? And I'd say, I'm a life coach. And they'd go, a life what? A life coach? And then I'd change it to a performance coach. They're like, oh, you teach sports. And I'm like, how do I change this? And so most of the times people try to sell the sausage, but you should be selling the sizzle. And I said to myself, how can I sell the sizzle? And so when I was cabin crew, uh, we would be asked every day, what's your special skill when we'd go on a flight? And I learned to talk about what I did differently. And so they'd say, Daniel, what's your special skill? And I'd say, you know, when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, that's the problem I solve. And the girls and the guys would be crying. They'd be like, oh, I looked in my mirror this morning. I hate myself. Well, that's what I solve. And they would line up. And I did about 500 coaching sessions before I even left my corporate job because I'd tell people the problem that I solved and they would line up. I used to get girls and guys knocking on my hotel room door on the layouts going, can you help me? I don't like what I saw in the mirror. Absolutely. Come on in. Let's have a coaching session. Yeah. And so you've yeah. got to learn to talk about the problem that you solve. See, people are problem aware. You don't go to the doctor when you're fit and healthy. Face it, maybe 1% of the population do. Majority of people go when they're sick. So when do people come to you? When they have a problem. And so if you can define the problem, if you can articulate the problem in a way that they say, that's my shit, they'll line up for your service. Because when you can describe it in a simpler way than they do, they just assume you're the expert. So when I would say to people, you know, when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, <laughs> yes, well, that's the problem I solve. Can you help me? Absolutely. Come on in. Yeah. See, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I need a life coach. Mm -hmm. They say, I've got to get rid of this problem. So learn to focus on the problem and talk about the problem. And when you can talk and articulate the problem better than they can, expert, authority, status, immediately. Oh, I love it so much. Definitely another note. Take that down. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, I think like, you and I could chat all day and I really do, you know, I really do admire what you're doing because I think there's so many people out there that, you know, need to, they have such a great business that they want to be able to, you know, help other people. They're just not sure what to do. So mm. I'm going to pop all the details of where they can reach out to you. So I'd highly recommend anyone who is watching, listening to this episode that, you know, you've got this idea for a business, reach out to Daniel. If you're already started your business, but you're not seeing it flourish where you want it to go, reach out to Daniel, definitely, you know, he's the man to go to. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on this episode. And, you know, I, yeah, I, I really do appreciate your time and sharing all of your knowledge with everyone today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all the details where you can reach out to My Daniel. Pleasure. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who is watching this episode of the Corporate Escapist TV show. Remember to follow your passion and to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all. Mm -hmm.